Over the next week, some 20 separate pieces of the comet rain spectacular devastation on Jupiter. If anyone had any lingering doubts that collisions take place and that they can have frightening consequences, watching those events on Jupiter convinced us. To actually finally see an impact on a planet was, a, was crossing a threshold. That event finally <laughs> convinced most of my geological colleagues that yes, there really are large impacts, not just on Jupiter, but on, on the Earth as well. Could you imagine what SL9 would have looked like in its 21 pieces if they had been near the Earth? Had any one of the fragments of SL9 hit the oh. Earth, uh, one of the bigger fragments, we, we probably would have had a dark cloud covering the whole Earth in the time of an order of an hour and a half. And we saw that the clouds on Jupiter lasted for months as fairly dark clouds. But what about even before the cloud? What about the rising temperatures with the infalling material? What yeah. about before that, if people knew that a fragment was going to hit the Earth? I wonder about the mass hysteria that could have resulted. Where would you go? People would say, where can we hide? What can we do? feel as though you were in an oven turned on to broil. An enormous hole has been gouged in the earth, and then finally the sky will just turn black. Absolutely, completely black. Everywhere, all over the world. Impacts today are a risk, they're a hazard. They're something we need to protect ourselves against. If we don't learn how to protect ourselves against impacts, then on the long term, we are likely to be wiped out by impacts. If it happened to the dinosaurs, it could happen to us. In SL9's wake, Scientists and weapons experts from Russia and the United States met at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Fires, you've got massive tidal waves. So we have the topic was the end of the world. Multiple uh, mechanisms to produce extinction. You're going to have everything burned down around you. You're going to Asteroids big enough to kill a quarter of the world's human population collide with the Earth about twice in a million years. Smaller bodies capable of wiping out a major city could hit once every two to three centuries. It's going to glow for about a half an hour and set everything on fire around you. Then it's going to be pitch black. One thing that makes the comet and asteroid impact hazard so important relative to other hazards is that it is the one hazard that is capable of killing billions of people, of putting at risk our entire civilization. We could have any number of storms or earthquakes or volcanoes, and they can do terrible damage locally, but they do not put the entire planet at risk the way an impact does. Incredibly, impact is the one great natural disaster which we may be able to prevent. Many of those gathered at Lawrence Livermore were veterans of the Cold War and already knew something about confronting assault from the sky. Even though some of the simulations, obviously, of course, carry the kinetic energies, carry the 
characteristically uh, about 100 times their mass uh, in, uh, in chemical high explosives. You have a rocket going after it. In this case, you have a nuclear explosion. You blow off some material. You get a reaction in this perpendicular direction, which here I've shown as being perpendicular to the closing velocity. If an approaching asteroid or comet is detected in the near future, the scenario might involve the most powerful long-range rocket in the world, the Russian Energia. Tipped with an accurate American warhead, the rocket would be detonated off the surface of the asteroid, nudging it out of its Earth-approaching orbit. Before you launch a missile, you need to know where to aim. Only a fraction of large Earth-crossing asteroids have been located. This may prove to be the greatest oversight in human history. I can tell you with confidence that for the 10% of the big ones that have been discovered, there is no danger. But I can tell you nothing about the 90% that we have not yet discovered. So, Yes, we understand the general nature of the risk, but we have not yet taken any real concrete efforts to protect ourselves or even to look and see if there's anything headed our way. More telescopes have joined the search. Even the US Air Force has contributed technology and expertise. Big science has taken up the hunt for asteroids. Still, the most experienced team in the business is leading the charge from a tiny new telescope in their backyard. Both Carolyn and I, we're eyeball scientists. We like to look at the sky. It's kind of an old-fashioned brand of science, eyeball science. Uh, eyeball observations, but there's still there's still a window there <laughs> for the eyeball scientist who's got the right idea uh, to go and make wonderful discoveries. Gene and Carolyn Shoemaker should know it's the story of their lives. Now they await with all of us the next messenger from the stars. The question is not if, but when.